Have you ever driven through a tunnel and wondered why they all seem to have the same curved shape? You've probably noticed that no matter where you go, whether it's a tunnel cutting through a mountain, an underground subway system, or even a passage beneath a river, they almost always have rounded walls and ceilings. It's not a random design choice or just about looking nice. There's a fascinating blend of engineering, physics, and practicality behind it. And today, we're diving into exactly why tunnels are built this way right here on History of Simple Things. The curved shape of tunnels is primarily about strength and stability. When you dig a hole underground, the surrounding earth and rock exert immense pressure on all sides. If a tunnel had a flat ceiling or square walls, those points would experience excessive stress, making them more likely to crack or collapse. A curved shape, on the other hand, distributes the weight evenly reducing weak spots and allowing the tunnel to withstand external pressures more effectively. This principle is similar to the way an arch distributes weight in a bridge. The curved form helps to channel the forces down along the walls and into the ground, instead of focusing stress on specific points. That's why ancient civilizations, from the Romans to medieval builders, often used arches in their structures. They simply hold up better under pressure. The deeper a tunnel goes, the more pressure it has to endure. Soil and rock exert what's known as overburden pressure, meaning the deeper you go, the greater the load pressing down on the tunnel. A rounded tunnel structure helps distribute this pressure evenly, preventing any single area from becoming a weak point. In contrast, a rectangular tunnel would have flat surfaces that would bear uneven loads. The stress would concentrate at the corners, making them more vulnerable to cracking and eventual failure. Engineers have found that by designing tunnels with an arch or circular shape, they can maintain structural integrity even under extreme underground conditions. Building a curved tunnel isn't just about strength, it's also more efficient. Circular or elliptical shapes allow for better support with less material. This means engineers can use steel and concrete more effectively, reducing waste and keeping costs manageable. Additionally, when using tunnel boring machines, TBMs, which are giant mechanical moles that dig through earth, they are specifically designed to create circular tunnels. Their rotating cutting heads carve out a smooth, continuous arc, making it far more practical to construct tunnels with rounded walls rather than trying to shape them into rectangles. There's another advantage to curved tunnels that might not be obvious at first, airflow and safety. Have you ever noticed how wind seems to rush through a tunnel? That's because air moves more smoothly in a curved tunnel compared to a square or rectangular one. The rounded design minimizes turbulence, which improves ventilation, making it easier to remove exhaust fumes and maintain air quality in tunnels used by vehicles or trains. For high-speed rail tunnels, aerodynamics play an even bigger role. When a train speeds through a tunnel, it pushes air in front of it like a piston. A rounded tunnel allows this air to flow around the train more smoothly, reducing resistance and preventing sudden pressure changes that could affect passengers' comfort. In earthquake-prone areas, tunnels need to be extra strong to withstand seismic activity. Interestingly, curved tunnels tend to perform better during earthquakes than flat or angular ones. The continuous shape allows the tunnel to flex slightly and absorb seismic waves, rather than cracking along sharp edges like a square structure might. In fact, underground tunnels are often safer than above-ground structures during an earthquake 
because the surrounding Earth moves with the tunnel rather than shaking it violently. That's why subway systems in places like Tokyo and San Francisco are designed with curved tunnels that can better endure seismic shifts. Curved tunnel designs aren't a modern invention. They've been around for centuries. Ancient tunnels, such as those built by the Romans, often had semicircular arches because early engineers realized this shape was naturally more stable. Fast forward to today, and engineers still follow this time-tested principle using modern tools and materials to refine the technique. Modern subway systems, highway tunnels, and even underwater passageways continue to use curved designs. The Channel Tunnel, which connects the UK to France beneath the English Channel, was constructed with a rounded shape to ensure it could withstand immense water pressure and geological forces without failing. Although circular and arch tunnels are the most common, some tunnels do have different shapes depending on their purpose. For instance, some shallow railway tunnels use a horseshoe shape, which combines a flat base for train tracks with a rounded top for stability. Meanwhile, utility tunnels that carry water or sewage may use egg-shaped designs to help control water flow and pressure. That being said, in nearly all cases where tunnels need to withstand significant stress, whether from heavy loads, geological forces, or even explosions, a curved design is the best choice. The next time you drive through a tunnel, take a moment to appreciate the careful engineering behind it. The curved shape isn't just a stylistic choice. It's a crucial factor in ensuring the tunnel's strength, efficiency, and safety. From distributing pressure evenly to improving airflow and withstanding earthquakes, the design of tunnels has evolved over centuries to be as practical as possible. So whether you're speeding through a mountain pass, riding the subway, or even walking through a pedestrian tunnel, remember, those curved walls and ceilings are doing more than just looking nice. They're keeping you safe and making sure the tunnel stands strong for years to come. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.